Thank you, Vince. Hi. Yeah. Professor Song. Yeah. Hi. I recognize some of these images that you put on. <laughs> yeah. I've not. I might be have been to one of these places. Cool. Have you also known the background? <laughs> I don't know where this is from. Somewhere you know. So at this moment, if you want to test the screen, you can also go ahead and you are the co-host right now. Yeah. Thank you very much for speaking uh -huh. at the Harvard CMSA. Thank you very much. Welcome. Can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Uh, Professor Sun, is your name uh, pronounced correctly as uh, Dan Tenson? Um, thanks, so. Yeah. Him, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think the, the music tone here is like a, a solo, though, something like that. Oh. It's um, the, just the first um, 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 is, um, is lower tone. How many languages do you speak? <laughs> you said when oh, you speak <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to learn more language, just like you learn a lot of, uh, you work on different subfields of physics. <laughs> so it's also good to learn different languages. <laughs> okay. I think it's do so so, sorry, I was saying. Yeah, it's like, do -so -so, like that. Yeah. A CGG uh -huh. in the music here, I was. Uh -huh. One, the, the first one is lower, but the two, yeah. yeah. And but how many has, how, how many how many tones there are? I remember there are, there are many tones, yes. I, I remember nine. No. Um six. Um usually they call it tell you six. Um, um in the in the usual classification, there is uh, six tone. Yeah. There are six. Yeah. I remember whenever I I listen to Vietnamese speak, mm -hmm. like listening a song, <laughs> listening like a singing. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's like a bird singing. We'll probably wait for one minute or so and we'll mm -hmm. start. Hi, Son, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, Long time news. <laughs> <laughs> you are still in the same place. I yeah. see from the background. Yeah. At yeah. your home. Uh, well, that's <laughs> well, 
it real, this is more, that's reality. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello, Arkady. No time to see you. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, good to see you, Bolo. Yeah. Actually, uh, the other and uh, Sean, I don't know. Can you see me? <laughs> I can see you. Hi, Arkasha. Uh, okay, but don't. Hi, and Sumir, hi, Sumir. Hi. Hi, Laura. Good to see you. Hi, Sumir. Okay, so maybe. Uh, we can gradually start. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Harvard CMSA Quantum Matter in Math and Physics Seminar Series. Today, very, we are very honored to have a, a Professor Dan Tenson uh, from University of Chicago. Uh, his name is actually Vietnamese, so I tried to check with him whether I pronounce correctly. I think the easy way to remember is the music tone of and Tim Song is like do so so C G G, and I think Professor Song can correct us if we pronounce wrong. Uh, Professor Song uh, graduated from Institute uh, for Nuclear Research in Russia, uh, which is Institute de Danie Istelet Dombani, Moscow, Russia. And then he went to uh, U Washington, MIT, Columbia University, and went back to Institute for Nuclear Theory in U Washington. And then he moved to uh, U Chicago a few years ago as a university of professor. And Professor Sun, Sun has done a wide range of works. I feel especially honored to introduce him today. Uh, as Simon's Foundation uh, described him as uh, one of the rare theorists uh, work has uh, deep impacts across sub several subfields in physics, including quantum chromodynamics, QCD, theoretical nuclear physics, condensed matter, and atomic physics. And he also contributed to the duality between black holes in ADS space and the strongly interacting fluids. And his work also been recognized uh, the rock medal of ICTP in 2018. And today we are very honored to have uh, Professor Sun uh, speak about his recent work on spin of the fractional quantum hole, magneto roton through polarized Roman scattering and that's welcome, Professor Sun. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, uh, audience, feel free to uh, interrupt or ask questions as long as you feel it's a reasonable time to ask. All right. Please. Just Thank you very much, Juven, for your um, introduction. It's my honor to uh, speak uh, at the CMSA seminar today. I'm going to tell you about a work that um, um, uh, I have um, uh, been thinking about with Zhu um, um on and off for uh, the last uh, eight years. And we have just uh, posted our paper uh, in January this year. Um, the plan of my talk will be the following. First, I will introduce um, um, some uh, notions in fractional quantum hole physics. And then I'm going to argue that in the fractional quantum hole effect, and there is an excitation uh, that is well known, but it's less known that such an excitation has a spin equal to two. And um, we are going to uh, argue that uh, detecting the spin of this excitation with uh, polarized Raman scattering is an important um, thing to do. And I'm going to present a theory uh, of such um, polarized Raman scattering. Microscopically, the um, physics of the fractional quantum hole effect or quantum hole effect in general is very simple. We have electrons that move in two dimensions uh, on a plane, and there is a magnetic field perpendicular to the plane. Uh, the Hamiltonian describing such a system consists of the um, kinetic energy of uh, the interaction of this particle with external field A. Uh, and the interaction between the, um, the particle, in this case, uh, just the Coulomb interaction between the electrons. And from this Hamiltonian, we know that the physics that comes out uh, in real systems uh, 
which contains also impurities, can be um, very non-trivial. Um, the behavior of physical quantities shown in this graph, uh, these are the whole conductivity, whole resistance, and uh, longitudinal resistance shows pattern um, which are um, which um, uh, which have, for example, plateaus at quantized values of the whole resistance. Uh, so let's talk about the physics behind these plateaus. So the fractional quantum hole effect occurs in particular when we have less electrons than the number of states on the lowest Landau level. Let's define nu as the ratio of the number of electrons over the degeneracy of the lowest Landau levels. If we have less electrons than the state in the approximation of non-interacting electrons, um, we will have a large ground state degeneracy of the ground state uh, because we can put the uh, particle anywhere in any um, set of orbital in the lowest Landau level. Without interactions, uh, we cannot determine the ground state. Uh, so ground state is completely determined by the interaction between the electrons. We don't know um, uh, the solution to the Schrodinger equation in general. But what we get from experiments and from uh, numerical simulations is that the structure of the ground state and the excited states are crucially um, depend, they depend crucially on the value of the feeling factor, nu. So for example, for realistic uh, Coulomb interactions, the ground state is gap when the feeling factor is one third and is ungapped when the feeling factor is one half. This one third state is the famous uh, um, quantum hole plateaus that uh, was first observed and the theory of this, um, uh, th um, this uh, state was constructed shortly by Lapin. Let us talk about one limit that um, um, uh, that um, that makes the problem more uh, startlingly um, non-trivial. So if we um, look at this Hamiltonian, um, there are two energy scales. The first energy scale is the distance between the uh, um, Landau level. The, leading, the, the, the lowest Landau level is separated from the next Landau level by uh, the uh, cyclotron frequency, which is B divided by M. In the limit when the um, mass of the electron goes to zero, which is a theoretical limit, but uh, in this limit, um, uh, the distance between the Landau level goes to infinity. And so all the physics happen on the lowest Landau level. Usually the lowest Landau level is taken experimentally by cranking up the magnetic field uh, for um, the purpose of um, understanding theoretical aspect of the problem. Uh, it's sometimes more convenient to think about taking the mass of the electron to zero. In this case, uh, you see here the, um, the first terms become singular in order to avoid the singularity, the system wants to have P plus EA to be equal to zero. And that's all the non-triviality of the of the fractional quantum hall state. Everything is determined by the interaction. In particular, one can reformulate the problem as the problem of a Hamiltonian acting solely on the lowest Landau level. Uh, the Hamiltonian is the projection of the lowest land of the potential energy on the lowest Landau level. Written it this way, uh, the problem is obviously non-trivial because there is no more small parameter. E square multiplies the Hamiltonian and there is no um, small parameter to expand around. Um, in this talk, we are going to um, uh, talk about, we are going to um, be interested in uh, excitation of a gap quantum hole state, a type of quantum hole state that appear, for example, at uh, feeling factor one third. And this state, this excitation 
um, was first studied variationally by Gerwin McDonnell and Platzmann in the 1980s. They were thinking about uh, analogy between the quantum hole state and uh, superfluid helium. And they tried to construct following Feynman's construction of the rotons in superfluid helium and excitations of the a, a neutral, electrically neutral excitation that they term magnetoroton. What they did was to take the Laughlin uh, state, the ground state, and act on that, an operator, which is the Fourier transform of the density operator, and then project it to the lowest Landau level. And um, uh, using this variational ansatz, uh, one see the, and assuming that this operator acting on the ground state create a single particle excitation, one can determine uh, the energy of that excitation. So the energy turn out to have the form, the shape uh, that um, has a minimum at some non-zero value of Q. And the minimum value here is at the magnetic lamp. Um, so that's the reason why that excitation is called the magnetoroton because the minimum of the excitation is at non-zero value of Q, like the rotons in superfluid helium. Soon after this um, uh, mode has been observed experimentally uh, in an uh, experiment done by Pinchuk group in 1993 and in many subsequent experiments by Pinchuk's group and also by other groups, um, the uh, original technique was to use photon to create this excitation. And this technique is called Raman scattering. Uh, one sent a photon with energy E, uh, typically of order um, it's a large energy, like EV scale energy, and see um, the reflection, the photon that comes out, comes out, and it turns out that there is a peak in the spectrum of the um, uh, gamma particle that comes out at energy E minus delta, but delta would be interpreted as the energy of the excitation that this experiment has managed to create since the wave number, uh, the momentum of, the, uh, of this photon is small, and it would be zero if the photon falls uh, perpendicularly to the uh, direction of the planes, the, uh, long, the, the transverse component of the momentum would be zero. One here would uh, be um, creating a magnetoroton or uh, excitation at zero uh, value of Q. So here, this place is where the um, the particle or the quasi-particle would be created. And what they see is a sharp peak in the spectrum of this electron at the uh, roughly the energy that was expected for the magnetoroton. So in this talk, uh, um, uh, I'm going to argue uh, uh, that the Raman scattering experiment using a circularly polarized photon can be very useful. And the same uh, um, uh, point has been uh, made by Holden, Rizai, and Kun Yang. Can I ask a simple question? Uh, sure. So uh, looking into this Raman process, I was wondering whether it's possible to have sort of a two roll tom process that actually can detect the finite Q component. So like, uh, two of the rotons would have with, with plus Q and minus Q, but their energy might be lower. This energy um, might be um, a bit lower than this. Uh, in, in this experiment, right. actually, we don't know uh, what is created. It's just, um, uh, as I will uh, try to um, show in, in, in a formula later on, um, we have, we basically create. Um, something, uh, uh, experimentally we see it, it's a sharp peak. So it could be that it's, uh, it's this uh, maximum here or a pair of the magnetoroton with right. the minimum. Um, uh, it's, an interesting, uh, it's an interesting question. Um, I think what I can say only is that um, if we are doing the experiment not at one third, but at n divided by two n plus one, um, uh, the two 
magnetorotone process may be suppressed compared to this one by a factor of one over n. I I I, I suspect. Um, I see. Yeah. Um, Thanks. Yeah, we, we can discuss that a bit later. So, um, but for the simplicity of the um, terminology, I'm just going to call whatever is that, that is created here as a magnetorotone. Okay, it's some excitation. So there is an important and curious fact that is known already since the paper of uh, Gerwin, McDonald and, and Platzmann, that on the Lewis Landau level, the density-density correlation function behaves like Q to the fourth in the regime um, uh, of uh, omega fixed and q goes to zero. So I call that density density correlation function of function S of q omega. Um, in the standard notation, that is the imaginary part of the density density correlation function. And when q goes to zero, it goes like q to the fourth at fixed omega, while gauge symmetry or conservation of charge requires only that only a q squared behavior, not q to the four. And the fact that is q squared is uh, very simple to understand. We have um, uh, charge conservation, uh, which means that if we go to momentum space, uh, the density is q divided by omega times the current. And the two-point correlation function of density is q squared over omega squared times the current current correlator. If we go to the limit q goes to zero, fixing omega, then rho rho is of order q square. But on the lowest Landau level, uh, rho rho correlator has to be proportional to q to the fourth. And the reason is the following, that um, in a system that we have, like electrons, we have, um, in addition to uh, conservation of charge, also conservation of momentum. Uh, let's consider um, a Galilean invariant system of particle with mass m. Then we have uh, these equations, which tell us that the time uh, derivative of the momentum density uh, is changed by the divergence of the stress tensor, like usual, but there is also a Lorentz force acting on the current. Um, the charge density, the, the current in, um, due to Galilean invariance, the uh, momentum density is m times the current. But in the lowest Landau level limit, we take m goes to zero, and so this term uh, can uh, disappear. The second conservation law becomes simply a, a constrained equation. There is no time derivative here anymore, and we can solve it in um, as an equation for j. So j is now one over b, time dt, derivative of the stress sensor where I have suppressed the uh, indices, uh, then one can um, put this equation back to the conservation of charge equation and get the equation uh, according to which the time derivative of the density is the second uh, spatial derivative of the stress tensor. And from that, we see that this rho rho correlator has to be q to the fourth. Um, uh, in uh, Sean, I'm sorry, but uh, why, it, uh, sh okay, what definition of the current? Why, why it should be the same current? So, so could it be different ones? So in, in this um, J, J in this equation and J in this equation are the same current. So these two can be uh, obtained as a uh, word uh, identity. And uh -huh. J here is just, um, uh, uh, derivative of the action with respect to A. So it's the same current that appear in two different word identities. Oh, yeah, I ask him because it's, uh, you know, uh, 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 energy momentum tensor looks like uh, a little bit uh, alien to, to a direction with A, right? In first equation, it's kind of normal electromagnetic, right? I mean, uh, second equation does not look like a normal electromagnetic current. Right? No, I mean, uh, this is not equation of motion. This is um, 
Uh, so here, uh, the, 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 the electromagnetic field is just purely background field. Uh -huh. And they act on the electron. So um, if, you, um, if you have one uh, particle move, its, uh, its momentum is changed by the Lorentz force. So that's I see. I see. Right, but in, in this sense, it's a, it's a, the second equation is more mechanical than the pure side one, right? The, the first one is a pure electromagnetic, right? Like in certain sense, the source of, uh, the, source of, uh, of the photons. The second one, in this, way, in this way, it's not like a source of uh, electromagnetic, uh, 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 electromagnetic field, right? Yeah. It, it, it can be made more formal. So it, uh -huh. um, this one is the consequence of um, gauge invariant. Yeah. And one can also make, uh, couple the theory to, um, to, to gravity in a certain way. And uh, okay, okay into, but, uh, no, it's, uh, it's essentially what I'm asking, but I would say that's not is a sequence of gauge invariance. I would say that gauge invariance is, is a consequence of current consideration, other way, other way around. So here too, this is just, um, yeah. and just in the relativistic uh, formalism, this, this would be T0i. It looks like conservation of, um, of the zero, Zero I component. Okay, of, okay. Of yeah. I got, I got it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it was. I was interested in to ask. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, sorry, can I ask another question? Sure. Related. I saw. Um, so this is in a crystal, and this equation uh, depends on assuming Galilean invariance. Uh, yes. But in a, in a crystal. Um, you would have impurities. There's a preferred rest frame, I would suppose. Well, so here, um, here the, the 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 thing is the following: when we talked about electrons in um, in 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 uh, say a gallium arsenide, uh, these have um, quadratic dispersion relation, and we are located right because the density of electrons are so small. All these electrons are near the bottom of the quadratic uh, dispersion relation, the quadratic band. And so um, the Hamilton, the effective theory describing these uh, um, electrons have Galilean invariance with a mass equal to the curvature at the bottom of the band. Right, right, I, I understand that. But um, um, why can I assume that momentum is conserved? Momentum so is conserved because the... Um, the Elastic momentum of these are... electrons are so small compared to the, um, are very small compared to um, to the inverse of the um, lattice spacing. The density, the density is very small. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough um, energy to uh, momentum to 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 undergo to trigger a boom clap process. Okay. Thank you. And so um, this uh, conservation law um, now um, looks uh, interesting because it's uh, similar to conservation laws that people working on uh, fracton related uh, physics now call high rank symmetry. And we can uh, formalize it in, um, for, as a high rank symmetry of the theory of uh, electrons on the lowest Landau level. So in this work, recent paper, we have, um, we have um, um, a point, pointed that out. Now, from the fact that the row row correlation function behaves like q to the fourth, I want to argue that that means that the modes that the oper operator row create um, have well-defined spin. Now, row row uh, spin equal to two. So when we have row row correlator, we can write it as sum over intermediate state n. Um, now, if row is an operator that has, um, well, let, let's, let's first um, think about this uh, state n. Um, excitation um, with zero momentum can be classified by spin because when we rotate the space, a Q goes to Q. And so uh, a, a, a particle that stay at rest um, simply stay at rest under rotation. Uh, 
um, and its qu its quantum state um, transform in certain way under this rotation, and um, the particle can be then classified by the value of spin. Moreover, uh, one can show that the matrix elements of uh, between the vacuum, the ground state, and the single particle, single quasi-particle state with momentum Q and spin S uh, should be have like Q to the S um, from, from rotational invariance. So for example, if S equal to one here, in order for the both the left and the right hand side to transform equally under uh, rotational invariance on the right hand side, I would right hand side, I would have to have QX plus IQY to the power of S or if s equal to one to power of one, s equal to two power of two. Sean, may, may I ask you, but uh, you know, in certain way, uh, okay, when you are saying that it is spin equal to, so it implies that a lower spin, like spin zero, is spin uh, one do not occur, right? Uh, so so it is some, I mean, because in, in this generic form, uh, it does not tell, tell you which spin is 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 show up, right? Is is going to show up, right? So so that's why I want to, I mean, I'm sorry about my naive questions. So, so sorry. Yeah. So here, um, uh, any spin can enter as the intermediate state in this formula. Uh, so if I'm uh, so in two dimension, this the spin is simply um, projection of. Uh, of the spin on the z-axis. Mm, so I, I want to argue that if here n, the, the, the states that enter here have spin two, and then naturally the um, correlation function of row and row would have no, I, I due to the four that. behavior. No, I, do fo I do follow this, right? But I wonder uh, what is the selection rule? Why say lower spin uh, would not occur, right? Uh, because they will be no, no, more noticeable at small q, right? I mean, if the spin z zero is spin one, right? Uh, so, so in this way, you are implying that they, those excitations uh, are, I don't know. They cannot it's... occur. Um, they just. Um... Well, there is a cyclotron model also, right? Which is a in, in the yeah, but here we are um, uh, we are so assuming right. lowest Landau level. I understand, but if you take the physical system, there is an excitation like that, but, but it's a high, at higher energy. At, at, at higher energy. Yeah, 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 no, okay, yeah, but it is uh, right, but it's uh, not that you know this in, from the, from the start, or uh, so what that the, those excitation with the lower spin are. Uh, you know, a higher energy, right? Uh, no, higher, higher than than spin spin two, right? So, so uh, this hierarchy of excitation uh, doesn't uh, doesn't. I do not see why it follows from your original equations. No, I'm just saying that it's uh, it's just uh, force on us by the uh, by the fact that this is uh, q is equal to four. I if see. it is, oh. yeah, it's just force on us. If it otherwise. Uh, so spin. Otherwise, you would have a spin one also excitation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. so 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 it's not generic, right? That that it, you you start from spin two. So uh, uh, as a lowest excitation. It's specific for um, state on the lowest land uh, for for this uh, fractional quantum hole um, regime, the uh, uh, lowest land level. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So this argument. Sorry. Uh, what is the uh, consequence of the higher rank symmetry? Um, it um, it uh, has certain um, consequences like um, conservation sorry, conservation of asking. dipole moments or conservation asking, of yeah x squared. Uh, I was and, asking uh, that Julio correlation function goes as q to the fourth isn't this a consequence of the higher rank symmetry? Can I say that? Uh, it follows here yeah, from the higher rank symmetry. Okay. Yes, yes. Because rho, um, the rho rho correlator would be d squared t, d squared t correlator, and each of these d squared give a q squared. And so um, Duncan Haldane has been uh, uh, arguing uh, for a point of view in which uh, the magnetorotone uh, is 
in some sense, a massive graviton of the quantum fraction or quantum hole state. In, in fact, one can write down the model um, where this mode looks somewhat like a massive graviton. Yes. Um, Andre so, Gromov yeah. and I did in 1970. Yes? If I may, uh, so since this um, um, Q to the fourth power law was derived by invoking um, momentum energy conservation, mm -hmm. I was just wondering whether there is a direct, more direct connection between these modes being graviton and uh, the fact that they you know, are, are a result of energy momentum conservation. Does it have to go through this higher rank symmetry? So is there a more intuitive I think connection? This, between... this, this graviton thing is, um, is separated from the higher rank symmetry. So the higher rank symmetry You want, uh, maybe I, I missed your question. You would well, like I was to just have... wondering whether we can view them as gravitons simply because, you know, the your derivation has something to do with energy momentum conservation. Uh, you know. It requires a lot. I think it requires a lot. Um, it requires somewhat more to make uh -huh. this theory to be a theory that looks like massive graviton. And even that, I... I'm not sure in which sense um, it is a graviton. It, this cup, coupling, for example, the coupling of this graviton to other modes um, doesn't have to be universal, uh, like uh, how gravity would couple to matter. Um, I see. It, yeah, it, it, it is an analogy, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, but- because, Simply from the spin two nature. Yeah. Yeah, but in this way, graviton uh, is also masses uh, long range, right? And here it is not a long range, right? So it's, so in this way, it's very different. Yeah, it's a bit different. Right. So there is a regime where it does become massless. <laughs> there is a regime where it becomes massless, yeah. And that's interesting. Right. It's yeah. near the pneumatic yeah. phase transition. And we argue in this paper that in this uh, regime, um, it looks like it's similar to graviton. But again, um, maybe let me not go in there. It's a in very interesting question. Okay, so let's, let's try to visualize this, um, this uh, magnet. People have been trying to visualize this magnetoroton uh, since they were um, shown to exist. Um, one way to visualize it is to use the, um, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, to make sure. So the, uh, the graviton story, if you call it graviton story is consistent with, uh, Weibel Witten theory. There has no conflict because the, the excitation is massive. Is that mm -hmm. the, the reason it's, for that? Or is that because it's, it's massive, gra it's massive excitation. Yeah. But the low, low energy theory is still Lorentz invariant, or it's not? Doesn't have to be Lorentz okay. invariant. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so one way to think about this is to use the Laplin quasi hole in quasi particles. Um, a Laplin quasi hole of quasi particle are um, um, charged objects. In order to make a, 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 a neutral object, one can um, one can uh, visualize a bound state of uh, a, a particle and a hole, a quasi hole and a quasi particle. Um, or uh, if one try to make a Q equal to zero mode, uh, since it has spin two, has some, one has to make some kind of a quadrupole structure like this one. So in the composite uh, boson theory, uh, this particle and quasi-particle and quasi-hole uh, would be the uh, vortices and anti-vortices. And this was actually, um, was first proposed by uh, Shu Cheng Zhang in his uh, paper in 1992, where he um, draw a picture of the magnetorotons uh, near its minimum, like a dipole of uh, quasi-particle and quasi-hole and near uh, zero Q as a quadrupole of a particle and hole. 
in the composite fermion theory, perhaps the understanding is a little bit um, uh, more natural. So in the composite fermion picture, uh, we absorb the flux, some fluxes into the electron to make it a composite fermion, which would fill uh, integer uh, number of Landau levels. Um, so these Landau levels um, uh, uh, you know, would uh, explain so the fact that the electron field one Landau level, for example, after the flux attachment in U for one third state, uh, sort of explains the existence of the gap in the fractional quantum Hall effect. And then one can try to excite the uh, particle from uh, the this lowest Landau level to the next Landau level. And it's shown out that this uh, the, 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 the excitation with the lowest energy is absorbed by the dynamical gauge field. And this Q equal to zero magnetoroton correspond to exciting uh, a, a, a composite fermion from this state to the next to uh, next state. So the change of the spin is equal to two and that correspond to the spin two of the magnetoroton. Another way to think about the same physics is to bosonize the Fermi surface of the composite fermion. Think about the Fermi surface as being deformed uh, elliptically uh, and in this way, one can um, one can one can interpret the spin two of the magnetoroton as the quadrupole nature of this deformation of the Fermi surface. So all these can be uh, formalized uh, somewhat in uh, in formulas that I'm not going to present. Uh, then, uh, could I ask a very quick question? Sure. In the previous slide, um, <clears throat> is the implication that each Landau level, let's label them by letter N, um, has a spin which is equal to N? That's what should I think of the first Landau level having spin one, second Landau level having spin two? And so is that obvious? I apologize if this is naive. No, it's, um, it's not. Uh, I, I, I don't think it is that uh, direct because each each of these Landau level would have a state which have different different power of z so mm -hmm. yeah i'm to say it's been two probably i misspoke to space spin two it it requires a bit more uh, the calculation of the matrix element mm -hmm. yeah i see and yeah um, when you talk about the spin of the of this magnetotron would it be correct to say that you're not necessarily implying that it's a composite object made of um, four spin half particles? I'm not excluding it. I'm just saying, well, could one also think of it as just an object with the orbital momentum L equal to two? And yes, fine, we could call it spin for convenience and kind of morally equated to a graviton. But, you know, do we have to you see what I'm asking? Can I just say, look, it's, it's an yeah, equal to representation of SO3 group, and whether you call it spin orbital momentum is just a quenture of semantics. It won't be, um, this question won't be solved uh, um, at the level of semantics alone, right? It's it, on, uh, on the basis of the transformation of this quasi particle with respect to rotation, we can only say that the total angular mm -hmm. momentum is equal of a particle with zero momentum address is equal to S. Yeah. No, but cer then, certainly you're talking about, uh, 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 you, you're talking about orbital angular momentum. There is no spin in the, pro you're assuming these could be spinless fer fermions or the spin is completely frozen out. So when, it is orbital spin. That, that's what I've been asking, yes. At the level of the original electrons, it is just orbital motion of the original electrons. I agree. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, from the point of view of the um, quasi particle, these are just some inherent angular momentum attached to that, to that quasi particle. But now one can ask a question about the sign of the spin. Does this Q equal to zero magnetoroton have spin equal to zero or minus zero, uh, minus two? equal to two or minus two? And to answer this question, we need to look at some uh, exact result. 
it's one way to look at this, um, to answer this question is to look at uh, some rule. Uh, so to uh, define the sum rule, let me um, you know, define two spectral uh, densities. So um, I can define two trace rest components of the um, of the um, of the stress tensor in complex coordinates. This would be T uh, Z Z that would have spin two and T Z bar Z bar would have spin minus two, and T Z bar Z bar is the complex conjugate of uh, T Z Z. And let me uh, uh, integrate this uh, t over x. So t and t bar contains only uh, zero momentum component. And then one can define the spectral function. This spectral function uh, just uh, tell us how many state uh, um, is created by the operator t when it acts on the ground state and weighted by the uh, matrix element. Um, so. These two functions, rho and rho bar, are different, though they look uh, similar. Uh, the first um, uh, row counts uh, spin two degrees of freedom, spin two excitations, and the rho bar counts spin minus two excitation. Since the spin of the ground state is zero, spin of this n is equal to the angular momentum of the operator t. And one can prove um, some rule uh, valid for uh, Lewis Landau level systems that the integral of the difference between these two, uh, um, uh, two uh, spectral densities uh, integrated from zero to infinity um, uh, is equal to S minus one, where S is the shift uh, that was introduced by Wen Zi as one topological property of the quantum Hall state. For the Laplin state at mu equal to three, uh, this S is equal to three. This shift is defined as the, ex as the intercept between the number of particles and the number of flux quanta on the sphere. So if S is different from one, like it is in the case of the Laplin mu equal one third state, we see an imbalance between rho and rho bar. There is more rho than rho bar. Recall that both of these rho and rho bar have to be positive uh, as uh, they are spectral functions uh, for this uh, difference to be um, positive. Uh, in some sense, rho has to be larger than rho bar. Another thing that one can show is that for the simplest model Hamiltonians for which the uh, Laughlin wave function is the exact wave function, rho bar can be shown to be exactly zero. Um, and so rho is uh, infinitely larger than rho bar. Under particle hole conjugation, uh, S minus one changes sign. Uh, so for example, uh, for nu equal two thirds state, uh, the uh, shift is equal to zero. New equal two thirds state uh, I'm talking about is just the uh, state in which we replace all the particle by the whole in the as a whole in on the Lewis Landau level uh, acting on the new equal one third state. And so for this state, new equal two thirds state, rho bar would be uh, more uh, dominant compared to rho. So that means uh, um, in some uh, in, in, in this measure, the, uh, the um, excitation, there are more excitation with spin two in the new equal one third state compared to excitation with spin minus two. And if we uh, make an assumption that the magnetoroton is the dominant excitation that uh, uh, exhibits itself as a delta function in this uh, spectral function row, that magnetoroton has to have spin two, not minus two. And the vice versa for the new equal two thirds state, since rho bar is dominating, uh, this magnetoroton has to have spin minus two. Now, uh, one can ask, how do we, how would we uh, know it? How would we know it experimentally? So this magnetoroton has spin two and the most direct way to excite this model would be to send, send a graviton to the sample. Send, 
graviton with correct energy, and it will be absorbed by the sample and create a magnetoroton. But that experiment is very difficult to do. And the next, th uh, next best thing is to use Raman scattering with circularly polarized photon. So here we imagine that we send a photon with certain projection of its spin on the direction of motion, which is a Z axis here, and observe the photon that comes out. If the spin of the photon flipped, and that means that this uh, orbital momentum has to be transferred to a mode on, the, uh, on this boundary. And uh, the flip, spin flip uh, from the, the skip, the, 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 um, the, um, the um, uh, argument that we have made here will be dominated by one sign, that is the spin of the electron like to flip in one way, but not the other way. Uh, for new equal one third state, it will uh, uh, transfer momentum, angular momentum two, not minus two to the sample. But there is a subtlety in this argument. And the subtlety is the following. A lattice, the lattice um, uh, has only cubic symmetry. And that means angular momentum is conserved on only mod four. Uh, and that means that spin two and spin two, uh, spin minus two are exactly the same from the point of view of this C4 symmetry. They can mix. So the question becomes not, uh, it becomes no longer pure. Uh, it becomes um, uh, a quantitative question of whether the breaking of the O2 rotational symmetry in the real material is small enough uh, to still enable a practical determination of the spin of the magnetoroto. And for that, we no longer can, um, uh, can um, escape dealing with the real materials, so, uh, which is uh, gallium arsenide. And we, have, uh, we know uh, quite a bit about the structure of the, um, uh, the band structure of the, uh, of, of, of the system. Of the of the semiconductor, it has an electron band, which is quadratic for all the purposes, uh, but it also has um, the other whole band, and these whole bands are not uh, rotationally symmetric. Um, there is a heavy, so-called heavy hole, and a light hole band. In the experiment, in order to um, maximize the a signal, one sometimes employed a technique of resonance Raman scattering, in which the energy of the incoming photon is, um, is tuned to be close to the uh, gap between the electron and the hole. And this, uh, when the photon comes in, it creates a particle hole pair. And then the physics is somewhat um, um, interesting. The, this particle hole pair, the electron here does something to the uh, lowest Landau level state, the quantum hole state, and create a magnetoroton. And then this electron annihilate with the hole again to a gamma with slightly lower energy. So the Raman scattering in which gamma goes to gamma plus magnetoroton go through a creation of a particle hole pair. Uh, the particle, uh, the, the, the physics of the, um, of the uh, particle is non-trivial, but the physics of a hole is basically very simple because there is no, 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 um, no other holes it can interact with. It's, uh, the, uh, the energy is pretty high compared to the uh, energy of non perturbative physics of quantum hole state. So we should be able to, um, to, uh, to integrate out the hole. And that's what we do. We want to see how the uh, violation of uh, rotational invariance in the hole affect the physics that, of the Raman scattering. Schematically, that is what I uh, have just said in words. A photon come in, become electron in a hole. Electron does something very non-trivially and create a magnetoroton and then annihilate back to the hole, becomes a photon. So here we want to factor out the non-trivial physics of this blob and integrate out all the 
uh, perturbative physics of the whole. Uh, this procedure is very um, uh, common in, um, for example, quantum chromodynamics, where one needs to, um, uh, to sequester the, uh, all the non-perturbative physics uh, from the perturbative physics. And here, what we do is we try to integrate out this whole and get the um, effective vertex that uh, couple the photons with eventually give us the magnetorotons. So here is the, uh, what we have to deal with, the Lattinger uh, um, Hamiltonian or the Lagrangian describing uh, this electron band that we call C and the whole bands that I call chi. The electron band is uh, described by a two component spinner. And this whole band um, can be uh, described um, by a rarita Schwinger um, field, the spin three half field. Um, it's um, form of the Lagrangian is a little bit complicated because for example, it, con it contains a term that breaks um, uh, breaks um, O2 rotational invariant. So J here is this uh, three by three uh, generator of the O3, of the SO3 group, and D is derivative. And this sum is um, sum over I uh, with four, something with four indices. So this sum breaks rotational invariance down to cubic symmetry. All this coefficient has been um, determined experimentally. So we, we can, we can start uh, from this Lagran from this Lagrangian, which also contains coupling, photonic coupling, dipole coupling from the electron band to the uh, whole band. So after the integrating integrating out the whole degree of freedom and projection to the Lewis Landau level, we can determine the effective coupling of the photon with the degrees of freedom. Uh, on the uh, lowest Landau level. And it turned out that um, uh, that angular momentum still uh, quite uh, well conserved. There is a mixing between uh, spin two and spin uh, minus two terms. So here at E are the photons. So here's the incoming photon spin one, outgoing spin minus one, for example. The spin two and spin minus two mix, but with coefficient that numerically um, is still small, quite small, uh, 0 0.16. In the rate, actually, this number is, uh, is square, so it's still smaller. So predominantly, the process of Raman scattering conserves angular momentum, doesn't break angular momentum by four, uh, luckily for us. And this operator T prime here can be expressed completely in terms of the uh, uh, projected uh, density on the lowest Landau level. So here is some expression that one can just take and then uh, ask people doing numerical uh, simulation of uh, quantum hole um, effect to compute uh, the matrix element. Uh, uh, Sean, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, but when you consider the sum rules, uh, remember this uh, TZZ and TZZ bar? Yeah. Uh, I wonder whether uh, there you can consider a state which is a mix uh, mixture of, uh, say, spin two and minus two, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. there you already kind of was kind of in diagonal, right? But I mean, either uh, spin two or spin minus two. But uh, is it possible to consider this kind of mixed states? No, in the, in the sum rule, we are uh, we are working in a certain low energy theory in which angular momentum is completely. Uh, is is uh, conserved. So here the situation is of, uh, is that in the low en at low energy in the low energy effective theory of the electron, um, the uh, dispersion relation of electron is uh, spheric is uh, rotationally symmetric. So we don't have to worry about this effect. Um, the uh, the problem with this experiment is that it it couples this uh, nice physics of the electron with some something. Uh, that breaks rotational uh, symmetry of the whole. And so we have to somehow deal, this, deal with that separately. But once we know this operator, uh, that's, that's done. We are basically done. 
Okay. Uh, okay. In the Thank lowest you. low energy, uh, this mixing is is just fixed by the UV by the physics of the. I see. Of okay. The, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, there is no separate uh, uh, kind of uh, some rules for for the mixed uh, because you can try because where, there, where you consider this uh, kind of um, it's like uh, T T T T T T. Uh, a calculator or t uh, bar t bar calculator, but I wonder whether it could be uh, t t. No, I mean t t bar would be zero. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, okay. It, it yeah. is exactly what I wondering about, right? Okay. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, if yeah. I may, this is something related to I just typed in the chat. Uh, but I was wondering is if it is possible to do this Raman experiment in, say, fractional quantum Hall state in graphene. There you would have a six-fold rotation symmetry. Then, you know, by construction, plus two and minus two spin are naturally distinct. You wouldn't have this problem of. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't have this problem. On the other hand, uh, um, this uh, people have not done this experiment. Um, I'm. I'm I, I, I don't I think have... I, I can answer this question because <clears throat> you know the relation between the energy and momentum of electron is much different from from photon. And in this case, if you do the Raman scattering on photon, you may not able to have the enough uh, momentum to create the... the no, you, you need, yeah, in, I thought you just need the uh, energy. Uh, you create magnetorotonic Q equal to zero in, in graphene as well. Right, uh, yeah. So you, 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 you can create the, the the, the magnetoton, but you cannot see the magnetoton minimum. Yeah, that's correct. You, you have to see a minimum even in the um, uh, gallium arsenide as well. I think uh, the first experiment that uh, was done by Pinchuk has Q basically equal to zero. Yeah, so, so but in graphene might be that even harder. Yeah, the, there is a subtlety there. I think the few impurities, they had allowed them to see the minimum. So there was some, uh, the analysis, I mean, literally it's true that the uh, momentum was supposed to be zero in those experiments. But because of impurity scattering, there was a small angle and allowed them to see the minimum. That's how the experiment explained the observation of the magnetoroton originally, as far as I remember. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, that's something I have to ask uh... Um, specialists about um... De definitely, it's because uh, it's attributed to the uh, impurities, uh, the momentum of right. the uh, even if it's tilted, the momentum from the photon is much too small to directly excite a single right. uh, 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 a single roton minute. Of course, impurities don't don't conserve momentum at all, but you have because if it's a Van Hove singularity type of thing, you have a very large density of states at the roton minimum, and therefore, uh, even if you've averaged overall momenta, you expect, and they find some kind of a peak that corresponds to this uh, single roton minimum, mm -hmm. but certainly attributed to impurities. And in, in graphene, well, okay. The other thing to emphasize is that they do need to do, in order to get a, a, a measurable si signal, they really do have to use this resonant Raman effect otherwise the signal would be much too small so that they have to tune uh -huh. their as i understand it at least they tune the photon pretty close to this uh energy between the uh the, this whole band and the electron band and that's why the whole band plays such an important role as in in this calculation i'm not sure in graphene uh, right there's just no band work. to resonate off of, of yeah to resonate off. another yeah yeah another yeah. problem but with this um, impurity story, I wonder if um, this, um, what comes first? That is, um, the, 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 before, well, the previous theory attribute this, um, relates the, um, the, the, the amplitude of the Raman scattering to the, 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 the function S, the, the, the dynamic, dynamic uh, structure factor that goes to zero too quickly, its Q goes to zero. And so uh, if, this, uh, if the system is um, completely pure, we should not be able to see any signal because um, the imagine the, the, this, the function S, the dynamic structure factor goes to zero. 
Uh, but as we, uh, if uh, this uh, more detailed analysis show that in Raman scattering, we are not measuring the, the dynamic structure factor, but rather the, uh, the, the, the spectral density of this operator, T prime. Uh, and so, uh, it, which is non-zero at Q equal to zero. And so, uh, I, so I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that, but, but uh, uh, the, the roton minimum is not at Q equals zero. The roton minimum is a large Q. And uh, the, I think the point that I thought was being made is that in, in, in the experiments, they do see a mm -hmm. peak that they associate with the energy of, of a single roton at the roton minimum, which would have a very large momentum, and that wouldn't show up in, the, in your T prime. In, in the ideal system, there'd be no signal at T prime. You, you, of course, you can get a pair. You can get a pair of Q and minus Q, but then that would have twice the energy. So that's not what they're seeing. I mean, maybe they see it at Q equals zero. That, that we can come back to that. But, but, but the, the peak that they see, which they associate with a single roton is uh, uh, would be uh, explained, you know, within this theory. Of course, you're, you're right that you're not looking at the single structure factor. You're looking at this T prime, the, the spectral density for the T prime, but it still has momentum conservation. Yeah, uh, maybe we should uh, uh, discuss more about that. Uh, um, yeah, so let me continue. So the non-trivial part of the problem is now just finding the spectral density of this operator T prime. But T prime is not the stress tensor, actually. It's um, form slightly differed from the stress tensor uh, on the Lewis Landau level. And so um, the statements that we have made previously on the uh, based on the uh, um, uh, um, some rules do not apply to T prime. T prime simply have the same quantum number as T, as uh, spin two, for example. Uh, but very uh, uh, interestingly, this operator T prime, for a reason, uh, uh, was exactly the operator that was used by Yu, Houndain, Rizai, and Yang to search for the fractional quantum hole gravitons. So these authors have certain intuition that led them to the correct operator that um, up to the uh, mixing between spin two and minus two, the correct operator um, that, was, um, that is responsible for Raman scattering. And when they do the experiment, uh, the numerical experiment, basically numerical ex Raman scattering uh, for new equal one third state, with Coulomb interactions, what they see is the very strong suppression of the T prime bar spectral density compared to that of T. So here we can see this, 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 um, this uh, different line here correspond to different number of particles for T. And then T primes are this little dot at the bottom, this square or, uh, or, or barely, barely, um, visible dot at the bottom of the graph. And so uh, this is that tell us that if we would do the Raman scattering in polarized Raman scattering in new equal one third state, the signal in one with one flip of the um, spin of the uh, photon must be uh, must completely dominate the, uh, the, the, the other uh, spin flip. The, uh, the, the, the approximation that we are using here, the applicability of the approximation is that first of all, uh, the energy we have to be uh, in working in the resonant regimes, uh, the energy of the photon minus the energy of this gap has to be smaller than the distance between these two level, for example. So in this, uh, this is um, experimentally is to enhance the signal, but theoretically for us, the calculation allows us to concentrate only on uh, two, one electron band and two whole bands, that all. And then uh, we need in our uh, calculation E, the offset this detuning of the frequency to be much larger than the scale of the non-perturbative physics on the lowest Landau level. 
Um, this uh, allows us to factor out all non perturbative physics, uh, all the perturbative physics uh, of the whole from the non perturbative physics of the fractional quantum Hall effects. Basically, this particle whole pair leaves, uh, doesn't live long enough to, uh, to feel this non perturbative um, effect of the fractional quantum Hall effect. But since there is a large a gap between delta and the, and the gap, uh, we have a large range of applicability for our theoretical calculation. So now one of the questions where this uh, Raman scattering experiment might uh, help to address is the, uh, nature, the question of the nature of the new equal five half state. There were various proposals. Uh, some of the leading candidates are the Fafian uh, state that was proposed by Moore and Reed, or the its particle hole conjugate the anti-Fafian state, uh, the one that uh, frequently uh, favored by numerical um, calculations, and the more symmetric version of these states called the pH Fafian state, and this one is particle hole symmetric, um, and uh, it's favored by uh, an experiment measuring the thermal hole conductance at the edge. Uh, and one of the problem is the tension between numerics and, and the experiments and uh, various proposal has been um, put forward uh, aiming to reconcile this discrepancy. Could it, could it be that uh, the effect of Landau level mixing and disorder uh, somehow um, uh, uh, in some sense mixes this anti fafian and fafian and make the system to look like a pH Fafian state, or uh, there is something funny happening at the edge that uh, led us to a wrong conclusion uh, from the measurements of the thermal hole conductance. So let me just mention to you this experiment here. Uh, they measure a quantity that um, uh, the, 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 the thermal hole conductance and these values is consistent with the pH Fafian state, but not uh, with, for example, the uh, anti Fafian state favored by uh, numerical simulations. So, if we can do the Raman polarized Raman scattering with new equal five half state, perhaps we can uh, help uh, that can uh, give us um, information about the bulk of the system that would be uh, complementary to the measurements to, uh, be, uh, at the edge. Uh, this state. Uh, the Fafian, anti-Fafian state and pH Fafian state differ from each other by the shift. By, by looking at the sum rule, we can conclude that the Fafian state has the magnetoroton that should have spin equal to two, the same sign as in the new equal one third state, while the anti-Fafian state has spin minus two. The pH Fafian state, if it in the ideal case of uh, particle hole, uh, non, no Landau level mixing, it would have to have S equal to and S equal to minus two magnetoroton in equal um, proportion. So this numerical experiment has been done uh, on the anti-Fafian state by Holde and Rizai in Akunyang recently. And here you can see the strength of uh, one spectral density Again, they have the correct um, T prime operator and the strength of the spectral density in one spin two channel is by a factor of 10 uh, larger than in the spin uh, minus one channel. If uh, one arrange for the system to be in the anti fafian state. So let me go to the conclusion. Uh, the lowest neutral excitation of a quantum hole liquid is a magnetoroton. At Q equal to zero, this magnetoroton has been either plus two and minus two, depending on the, um, the quantum hole state. And uh, there is an experimental accessible gravitational probe of quantum hole state, uh, polarized Raman scattering, and that can distinguish different quantum hole state. And in particular, it might uh, be able to, leave, uh, to, to distinguish different candidates to the new equal five half state. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Professor Sun. Uh, I have a comment. Please. So there are some recent experiments also by Pinsuk's group in the N equals one Landau level, uh, where they say, at least I'm not sure what the polariz what polarization they used. There was a talk at the March meeting by one of the collaborators who's now in China. And in the seventh third state, where there is a quantum hole plateau, they see a mode, a collective mode, they call it a plasmon, but they say it's a quadrupole. So I would imagine, I, I, then I will tentatively uh, identify with the mode that uh, Son is talking about. Um, that mode apparently is not present in the five half state. It cannot be, it couldn't be measured, but I don't recall, they didn't say much about both polarization they used. I assume it was linear, but I may be wrong. Um, so these experiments probably already exist in some fashion. I'm not sure whether they are definitive enough to answer this question in the first, in the first lambda level, in the N equals one lambda level. Interesting. Yeah. So first of all, um, your uh, terminology of first Landau level confused me at the beginning, but it's okay. Well, like uh, <laughs> Landau levels are labeled like, <laughs> but, you know, like stories yeah, in, but, uh, in uh -huh. it's Europe, you, in European. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, but the uh, uh, I think all these uh, I, uh, from what I heard, the the experiments are done with linear. Uh, that was polarization so far, yeah. That's what I assumed, but yeah. uh, but at any rate, they claim to see a quadrupolar mode, which they call it a quadrupolar mode. In fact, interesting. In, in the seven, so this is in the seven thirds plateau, which in a sense will be the analog one would think of the one, one third, third plateau, but in the equals one lambda level. Um, so that's what they claim to see, and it's actually quite prominent, but. It cannot be detected actually in the five house regime. Interesting. Yeah, I should uh, okay. contact the authors. So, thank you. Uh, uh, may I ask you uh, if you start from un not polarized, I mean, uh, or linear polarized, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, photons uh, the, uh, in the scattering, then it should be some kind of. Uh, um, uh, choice of of, of of circular polarization at the end, right? Even if you if your original photon is not polarized, I think so. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just detection. Yeah, you need to detect the final. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. in principle, it could. You it's could maybe yeah. It's a good point. I think yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I if, yeah. if I can make a comment. I, I, it, it, very nice talk, and it was very clear. Uh, I, uh, the only thing that I found a little bit confusing is uh, the extent to which you're assuming that there's a single mode. I, uh, you, by using the word uh, magnetoroton and looking at Q equals zero magnetoroton, it kind of uh, focuses on this simple picture where you have just a, a single uh, mode that continues all the way to to uh, uh, undamped mode that, that continues all the way to Q equals zero. Mm -hmm. But of course, it, it, as you also pointed out, it, it's, it's, it's not certainly at, at large um, denominators, it, 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 it's more complicated. And mm -hmm. uh, you, you can produce at Q equals zero, uh, you can produce, of course, a pair, as you said, of, 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 mm -hmm. magne of rotons from the magnetoroton minimum and the question that that gives you a, in principle, a, a continuum of states uh, that, um, and uh, it's it, depending on exactly what the energies are. You, the, this uh, the, the the single magnetoroton, as it were, m could be overdamped by mixing or be have damped by mixing with these states. And I would think that would be the more general case. Uh, certainly, in the case of the the, the numerical simulations that you were referring to at, at, um, at mm -hmm. five halves by Haldane and collaborators, it, they get not, it, it seems like they get many peaks. It's not just a single peak. So I, and that's, a, of course, it's a finite system. So everything is discrete, but um, presumably in a, I would assume that in a, 
in an infinite system, they would there would be just some continuum. Of course, there'd be a big a big difference in the the intensities for the i plus and i minus, and that's what they would want to to uh, or you would want to use to distinguish the Fafian, the anti Fafian, and the uh, pH Fafian. But they, but they, but it's not really in, in in any case what I would call a sharp magnetoroton. Yeah, it's not clear, um, for example, from this, I agree that uh, from this fi uh, figure, for example, if when they are going to a larger number, one of these peak can, uh, will look like a sharp magnetoroton um, Q just, um, but, um, but it is not, um, from, from the point of view of, uh, of, um, of, um, uh, for example, so from the point of view of the of the sum rule, it's not important. The sum rule counts all the all state here, and from the point of view of distinguishing um, the spin of the state, um, it it will not be a, a, a hindrance because we just need to just measure the spectrum of the outgoing photon and see which which um, which one dominate. Yes, I agree. I remember perhaps Xiaogang has some comment. Maybe he can say something. Yeah. No, I don't have comment. I guess uh, some, some, some previous uh, numeric calculation agree with uh, this uh, spin two mode uh, for, for new to uh, two fifth states. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I do have a puzzle. Can you uh, can you explain this slide just a bit more to fill in your complaint? I plus and I minus. No, what, should I, what should I? Have? I plus and I minus are our row and row bar. I think I plus is our row and I minus is row bar. Something. These are these count the number of the spectral density of um, the spin two mode as uh, created by the operator we call T prime. And this is spin minus two mode. Uh, uh, um, by the way, this plus or minus two is also, um, one has to be careful uh, in the quantum hole physics. Sometimes Z is equal X plus I, Y, sometimes X minus I, Y, I cannot say. So, but one is, um, one is spin two, the number of spin two mode as measured by the operator T prime and the other is by operator T prime bar. And you can see from the scale that one dominate the spectrum compared to the other in general. Uh, if one, um, but, but it has omega dependence. So when omega is small, somehow row dominance and omega is around 0 .0, 0 0.05, somehow row bar Oh no, this, this is zero four. This oh, scale here, scale here is, is, is okay. different. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Question yeah. comments, please feel free. Yeah, maybe I should look at the chat and see what. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to understand the sum rule for the shift as a geometric index formula? Um, I, we don't have a good um, good understanding um, of that. Uh, it's a geometric formula. No. Um, no. Unfortunately. Okay. Uh, if not, uh, let's thank uh, Professor Sun first and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.